What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna take a look at this Harbor Freight 1400 watt peak 1100 running watt inverter generator. I picked this up from Harbor Freight for about 450 bucks. I've been eyeing this for a while because this is one of the smallest inverter generators you can get. It is only low power at 1100 watts continuous, but I do like the fact that it's small, lightweight. It has good run time on less than a gallon of fuel. And yeah, we're gonna unbox it. I'm gonna show you what's in the box. We're gonna add oil, gas, run it, power some things with it. We're gonna hook it up to an oscilloscope to check the output. And I'm gonna give you guys my final thoughts on it. So without further ado, let's open it up and I'll show you what's inside the box. All right, so obviously you get the generator itself. As you can see, it's pretty small. I'm actually gonna weigh it, but it's very light. I have the 2000 watt version of this as well, the little bit bigger one, and that one's about 50 pounds. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh this too and see how much this weighs. All right, I don't know how that's good to gonna show up, but that says 32 pounds. This is with no fuel or oil. All right, as well far as comes in the box, you get a set of leads. Basically, this lets you hook directly to a 12 volt battery because this can put up to five amps output on the 12 volt side. So this has its own special plug on the front for that. You get that, you get a spark plug wrench. You get this weird little funnel thing, which apparently is to add the oil into the unit because we're gonna see the oil fill is kind of recessed into the inside of it. So you need this to add the oil. And then you also get your owner's manual and a reject kit to jet it to higher altitude. So if you're higher up, you need to rejet it with this. It has gaskets, some couple jets and all that. And yeah, that's it. Let's go ahead and uh, get some gas and oil this thing and fire it up. As far as oil goes i'm just going to run some 10w30 i'm going to end up changing the oil after the first few hours anyways to kind of break the engine in i do kind of recommend doing that so yeah let's get to it. it looks like i need to get a flathead or a phillips to pull the side cover off all right as far as the front of the unit you have two 110 volt plugs you have your parallel outlets because you can buy a parallel kit and actually hook two of these together to double the output you get two USB ports, a one amp and a 2.1 amp USB port. This does have the carbon monoxide safety feature where if it detects too much carbon monoxide, if you're running it in too tight of an area, it will shut the generator off. You have three lights. You have an overload, an output and a low oil light. This is gonna be your 12 volt where you're gonna plug in this connector right here if you wanna connect it to a battery. You have your eco throttle. So we're gonna see how, what that does when we get it running and then a reset. And that's pretty much it. Not a whole lot to it. All right, I had to switch my GoPro because my other camera died. So if you guys notice a quality difference, it's because we're using the GoPro. But we're gonna go and pop this side cover off so we can add oil and then there is our oil add right there. So as you can see, it is kind of recessed in the unit. And then I'm also gonna show y'all how to do an oil change. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know. But once we kind of break the unit in a little bit, gonna do a first oil change. So it does not come with oil. Take your little special funnel it comes with. I hope y'all can see this okay. And then you wanna fill the oil to where it's just about to come out of the crankcase, like at the top of the threads. And that's kind of when you want it. That's how you know it's full. So I'm gonna very carefully not make a huge mess doing this. Whoa, I'm already making a mess. All right. So you can barely see it's right here. It's gonna be hard to see on the camera, but it's right at the edge. So that means it's completely full. So we are good to go there. Go ahead and put the dipstick back in. See it's on the dipstick. And if you're curious of what the inside of the unit looks like, that's pretty much it. So you got your carb right here with the throttle. This is your choke. This is your little air filter. And I believe this also is where you drain the oil. So when you do do the oil change, you don't have a drain bolt. You actually have to pull this out, tip the unit out, and then you take this little, actually there's a little slit right here and that's where the oil is gonna pour out. But like I said, I'll show you guys all that once we get this thing broken in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and slap the side cover on and get some fuel in this thing and uh, let's get it fired up. And I think I read that the fuel capacity is like 0.79 gallons. So it does not hold a lot of fuel. Okay, oh, yeah, that just sprayed in my eye. I'll be right back. Remember to depressurize your fuel cans because that just sprayed me in my face. Now I'm also going to add stable to the fuel. So if you don't plan on running the, the heck out of it right away, I would suggest put stable just to keep the fuel from getting nasty. All right, we are full to the brim. Put your fuel cap on. And then make sure when you go to run it, you turn, you flip this from off to on. That's going to let air go into the tank. And this helps keep the, fr uh, the fuel from getting stale. This being off creates an airtight seal to keep the fuel from going stale. And then all you got to do is turn it on when you're going to run the unit. All right, here we go. First start of the Harbor Freight 1400 watt inverter generator. See how she does. See how many pulls it takes. All right, fuel engine's on. This also turns the fuel on. Go ahead and put it in start position to the choke and let's give it a yank. Oh wow, started right up. Oh yeah, this thing sounds good. I'm gonna turn the eco throttle on because right now it's off. And if I stand back here, I mean, you guys can hear how quiet this is. So now let's plug some things into it. I'm gonna plug a watt hour meter into it as well so we can see the current draw of what we're plugging into it. 
All right, so the generator is outside. I have an extension cord running inside. And the first thing we're gonna try to test is if it'll power my charger. So this is about a 600 watt, 48 volt charger. And I'm gonna plug this into my solar power bank just to kind of feed it some extra power. And we're gonna go outside as soon as I plug it in and listen to what the generator actually does when it starts to load up. All right, so now we're outside. I don't know how good the watt meter is gonna show. Up there it goes, starting to load up. 380, 480, 500, 80, 600. So yeah, we're about 600 watts right now and it doesn't seem to really be struggling. As you did hear, the RPM did kind of increase as the load increased, but that's normal. So I'm gonna let it run on this for a while just to kind of break it in a little bit. Then we're gonna try, I have a window EC and we're gonna try that next. I also wanna try my fridge to see how it'll handle the surge of the fridge compressor kicking on. So that'll be interesting to see. All right guys, I went ahead and disconnected the charger we had plugged into my solar battery. So now we're gonna test it out on this 8,000 BTU Medea window AC unit. This is an inverter style AC unit, so it doesn't quite have the surge that a normal one would have, but I do have one of those somewhere that I can probably go get and be able to actually test that out some more. So right now we're just gonna hook this up. I'm just gonna turn it on and we're gonna see what it does. And I'm gonna measure the watt draw. This might get close to the max of this generator. This does 8.7 amps and the generator is good for 9.2 amps. So we're gonna be pretty close to the out full output, but it'll be a good test. So I'm gonna set it up and let's see what it does. Uh, also, the eco throttle is on, so we're just gonna leave it on and let it do what it wants to do. Right now we're drawing like 0.4 watts. That's just the unit plug this. Now we're gonna turn it on. There it goes. All right, oh. All right, so we're pulling out 880, 219, 300. I'm gonna move the generator a little closer. So far we're at 270 watts. Now in the scenario you see in front of you, it's nice to be able to run at least a window AC because like if you're camping or doing something in a small cabin, this is, you know, a bare bones generator. This is probably the smallest you want to go, but it is nice because it's very portable and it can absolutely power an AC unit. So just those two things combined, you can kind of really do whatever you need to do. Put it in a tent, put it in a small cabin, like I said, put it in a shed or whatever you're really doing. And it seems to power it just fine. If you're going to do this, I would recommend an inverter style window AC unit, but I do believe a normal mode would work. I have one at a buddy's house that I'm going to try to go grab and maybe plug that in and see what it does. Pulling about 320 watts. I'm going to try to get this thing to crank out as much cool as pop. I'm actually really enjoying that. It feels nice. All right, I have the AC unit adjusted as cold as it'll get with the fan speed on the highest. We're up to 350 watts. Air, air is nice and cool coming out. Not bad. Alrighty guys, it looks like the AC unit's kind of leveled out at about 420 watts. I'm going to go ahead and say this test is a success. Now we're going to move on to the refrigerator and see how it does with that. But yeah, so far it's working great. Generator's working great. AC doesn't seem to mind running on a generator, so that's good. And like I said, I do want to hook an oscilloscope up to this to see how clean the power is. That would be interesting. But yeah, anyways, we're going to connect the extension cord again, run inside, connect the fridge, and just see what it does. The most I got the AC to pull was 400 watts. I know that AC can pull more, but for some reason that's all we're getting. So it's fine. It's only for testing. And uh, now we're going to move on to plugging in the fridge and see what the generator does hopefully it can handle the surge of the compressor all right we got the extension cord plugged in watt hour meter plugged in let's go inside here's our generator power now the fridge is running right now so i'm gonna have to unplug it and let it sit for a minute because the compressor is not going to immediately kick on as you guys can see the generator is in fact running so we're gonna go back in the house and connect it up and see what it does all right so we got the fridge plugged in i'm gonna set y'all up in front of the watt hour meter hopefully y'all can see that start the generator back up plug the fridge in all right now i'm gonna go in the house Hopefully y'all can see the watt meter. Now I'm going to plug in the fridge and wait for the compressor to kick on. And I hear the generator ramping up. Let's see what it's doing. Probably gonna be pretty loud and out there. What happened? I wonder if it tripped. No, maybe not. I saw 900 watts for a second. No, I think we're good. I heard it ramp up for a second, but then it ramped down. That may have just been the, I don't know if it's running or not. Can't tell if it's running. All right, it's so a little update on the fridge. It kind of took me a while to get it to work correctly. So the fridge is running, the compressor's running, it's cooling just fine. So we're pulling about 120 watts. What I did notice for a split second when the fridge kicked on is it went to close to a thousand watts because of the compressor load and the overload light flashed, but the generator did not go into overload. So I think that's about the most you're gonna get out of it as far as surge, just because of induction motor. Induction motors will have a ton of surge. So just kind of keep that in mind. I think it would definitely work though in the event of an emergency. If you're just trying to power a fridge, I think it'd be just fine. All right guys, final test of the Predator 1400. We're gonna check the waveform coming out of the generator. So right now I have the generator running. This is the cord coming from outside. I would do this with the generator next to it, but obviously it's gonna be running and I don't wanna take my computer outside all right guys so as y'all can see this is the waveform very very clean and we're getting 120 to 130 rms it's kind of bouncing around a little bit i'm not sure how to stabilize that i'm gonna show you all the frequency and there's our frequency 60.03 hertz so as you can see 
Very clean wave, very good power coming out of this unit as you would expect from an inverter generator. So pretty happy to see that and that is awesome. In a future video, I'll plug a normal generator, a non-inverter, we're gonna see how bad the power is. But as you can see, they're very clean. That's what you wanna see. It'll work great on sensitive electronics and computers and all that good stuff. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for this video. If y'all liked what you saw, let me know. If you think this is a good generator, let me know in the comments. Personally, I do like it. I would recommend it. It is a little high on the price because for another $100, you can actually get the 2000 watt one. But in my particular case, I wanted something light, very portable, very compact. And I think this checks all the blocks. So other than the price, which is subjective, I think it's a great generator. It did everything I needed to do. Just keep in mind, it is very small. If you're trying to power big things, you might need to go one size up. But it did everything we needed to do. It didn't shut down or do nothing weird. And I think it'll be a good unit. Unit. So let me know what else you guys want to see me do with it and I will catch you on the next video.